Good afternoon. Uh, this post I'm gonna it will be on YouTube, but it and it will be on my blog site. Hopefully, I can get the video on there too because I know some people like to read them and some people like to listen. Uh, this one is on Proverbs twenty twenty seven. The spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inner depths of his heart. And yes, the computer screen is right there uh, so i will be reading off it a lot i'll look at the camera as much as i can but uh, i just don't have it by heart so uh first of all uh part of this came out of the of a david jeremiah part of the information uh some of it came out of the david jeremiah study bible some of it from a tony evans uh Bible commentary, and some of it is me. Uh, all of it is God. But uh, anyway, in this one, it says, the spirit of a man, spirit in this verse, in this passage, literally means breath. And if you look back at Genesis 2 7, and the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And became and man became a living being. Uh, this this proverb Proverbs twenty twenty seven is declaring that all people live because of God and His inscrutable knowledge of His creation. That word inscrutable is means impossible to understand or interpret. And we all know there's a lot of things. I mean, this universe itself. Uh, I listen to. Uh, cross-examined on YouTube. It's Frank Turek. Uh, mostly Frank Turek. That's the one I listen to anyway. And he's even said that there are uh, scientists not the particular ones he's talking about are not Christian scientists. They are but they have admitted a lot of them here recently. Not necessarily atheists but not Christian scientists. Uh, but they have admitted recently that in their research and study on the uh, the universe itself, all of over my head, but the facts are that they have even determined, embedded, whatever you want to call it, that uh, the way th I don't have all the the wording details of this. But the way the the things interact in space within the universe, uh, it does show somehow or other that there is a beginning point. Uh, if there's a beginning point, it had to start. If it started, something, someone had to start it. But the further part is that however it came to be, if it had gone minuscule like, thickness of your fingernail further or not quite that far that it would have exploded or imploded on itself the universe the whole creation and not only that but it takes uh, a mind to put all this together and also run it so uh, just like this says uh inscrutable knowledge of his creation which is I don't care how smart the scientist or whoever it is we're not going to, we as mankind we are not going to figure that out uh, we can know a lot of things and some of this stuff we're not supposed to that is where faith comes in uh, I like one thing I read on Facebook recently actually several times you have faith in your even in the mechanicals on your vehicle to get you down the road safe, you have uh, faith in the pilot of the airplane that you get into, even though you've never met him, don't know what it looks like. Uh, the All of these different things that we do daily, we are showing faith. So if we can have faith in this man that's flying the airplane and the mechanics, the, the builders that built the airplane, the mechanics that keep it running safely, correctly why are we having a problem putting faith in God that gave all those people 
the intelligence to learn how to put that plane together, how to maintain that plane, how to fly that plane and land it. And all of the other people that are involved in that process, in just that one process, uh, complicated for humanity, not complicated at all for God. But uh, in this as well, we as Christians, as long as we are diligent to stay close to God as we should be, we're close in spirit. It says the spirit of a man is a lamp unto the up uh, as a the lamp of the Lord. My understanding of that is he is literally guiding our path, that lamp, and as we are diligently seeking him and he is showing us how to live our lives, what to do. The especially the first thing that comes to my mind with this kind of thing is the decisions that we make that honestly make no sense to man and society norms and uh but we know in our heart that it's the correct thing to do do we find out later what god's up to what he's doing or do we never know or do we know immediately it's all of those at any given point but that's that faith uh, god actually wants a personal relationship with us he wants us to have that personal relationship with him and just like if we were two people, or any two people, or even a small group in particular, but uh, if we're going to have a relationship, be friends with people, or even if it's one of the, you know, a relationship that will come into marriage, both parties have to desire that and have to diligent, diligently work at that in order for that to happen. And it needs to be God-centered. Their lives need to be God-centered. Their relationship needs to be God-centered. The It does say on here, the second line of the second part of verse 27, Proverbs 20, says searching all the inner depths of his heart. Well, we are searching for the inner depths of Jesus. We are going to know that that he divulges to us. But why else would God search our inner heart, which he does? He knows us better than we know ourselves. He put us together. We are trying to figure out, especially at younger years and trying to come up with what you're going to do for a career and just your hobbies and, you know, things, life in general, your interest. Uh, trying to figure out what we do like, and some people have a really hard time with that. And, okay. Uh, but the way to know who we are, whether it's our interest or that life walk where... Hopefully, when we go somewhere, when I go somewhere, just walking in the room, people don't, and people don't know me at all. I should have a presence about me where they see Jesus through me. When my name is brought up, when I just uh, when I'm not even there, my name is brought up, or when uh, I talk, or the things that I do, the things that I say, all of it should. It doesn't have to be about Jesus that I'm talking about, but something in there should be pointing people toward Jesus. And a lot of times it would be just one of those, uh, you know, a comment or two where we do interject about Jesus. But even if we don't do that, there should be something about us. I used to work with a man that fit this category very well. Uh, you knew what he was about when you saw him. His, even just his demeanor, not even walking, just just him. You knew that he was had a pure heart, and his heart was for God. Uh, but that's the only reason that would do that. And so far as for you know to know who we are as to each individual to know who you are. God is the one that knows you. You don't know yourself. I don't know. My, you know, none of us do. Hearts are fickle. Human hearts are fickle. One week we like 
this, something happens, and then we don't. Uh, some of that's just in growing up, honestly. But some of it is also within that deceitful. I mean, it, I think it aids to confusion for a lot of people that they started over here, they lost interest, they went over here, they lost interest. You know, they don't finish anything because, now my wife will really love that one with the projects that are going on that I haven't finished. Shh, don't tell her. Uh, but our hearts are fickle. We are all over the place at any given point. point. Some folks are better than others at it, but we still change our mind. God's heart is true and steady. He is the truth. He is the way. Uh, the only way we're going to know who we are is to seek Jesus. Uh, and with that, life for humans is but a vapor. I mean, I don't care if we live to 115. It's still in terms of humanity versus forever in heaven or forever in hell if you don't seek Jesus if you don't surrender to him uh, that forever is just that it never ends uh, and God wants the relationship with you and he wants you to want a relationship with him and he uh, encourages us to that he commanded us as Christians for evangelism and the great commission and to spread that good news of Christ so, so that we can know him uh, people don't come to Jesus just because they decide that they want to. I mean, think about that. If you're doing, and you are, say you're doing in, in things that you like, you're just going to keep on trucking and everything you think is good. And, and But then there's that something without a tug, without something there to encourage you toward Jesus and to realize that something is wrong without him. Again, we don't search for Jesus without the Holy Spirit talking us toward Jesus. Uh, that's, you know, those inner recesses. He knows ours. He knows where we are. He knows where to come get us. Some of the disciples were fishermen. He said, Listen, I'll make you fishers of men. He knew how to talk to them in language that they, in, in mindset that they knew. And he will do the same. He does the same for us all. And he also places us, I believe, in certain interest levels to glorify him. And then with us glorifying him in what we do to his benefit. Now, uh, if you don't know Jesus as personal Savior, if you have never prayed and asked Christ in your heart, you know you're a sinner, you ask forgiveness for that, you repent, and you seek him he will honor that that will be that is your servant that is the only way to get there and if you do that and it's printed up here and I just said it as well uh, please reach out I would love to talk to you some more and whatever whatever questions whatever subject matter uh, we'll go uh, get in the Bible. I mean, if you're not uh, local here to Tuscaloosa area, we can do it in text back and forth, or at some point we'll figure out how to dis uh, discreetly or, or whatever uh, exchange, maybe email, and then go to phone or whatever. Uh, I'll be glad to do that. If you are saved and you're struggling, welcome to the club. We're humans. We all will. Uh, and again, the same stuff of if you're local or if you're not. Put it down in the in the comments. Reply. I'm going to figure out how to attach a an email to the descriptive part of this to be a little bit more accessible. But there are people re replying already. Some, so I know it's available. Reach out. Let's talk about it. Let's talk it through. Uh, saved or not saved, whichever questions, comments, disagreements, uh, bring them all. And if you would, if you like this content, please 
click the, the like and share it everywhere you can to, so that this content can reach out and more people hear it uh, and give people opportunity to make a decision on their own even on this content but this content is about Jesus uh, but if you click like and share it will certainly help the channel and if you don't like it then don't do that <laughs> uh, and you don't have to click on it again but anyway that's all for today I appreciate you listening I appreciate you reading I appreciate you doing both I will try to put these both together uh, again this I am a work in progress in my Christianity and in life and this blog and the YouTube channel it's all a work in progress I'm getting it figured out slowly. Hopefully I'll uh, get a little better learning quicker and make it easier to access and make better videos. Uh, God bless you all. I love you. God loves you. That's the most part. God loves you. And uh, we'll talk soon.